صلي صلي أيها الآب الأزلي الذي قدس راية الصليب المحي بدم ابنه الثمين نسأل مراحمك أن الذين يكرمون الصليب المقدس مغفرة خطاياهم ودخول المجد الأبدي باستحقاقات خلصنا يسوع المسيح الآن وإلى الأبد أخوتي الأحبة اللي مشوا بالمسير يحبوا يفوتوا على الكنيسة هنيو قدام المذبح وبيرجعوا يطلعوا لبرا، إذا في محل جوا أهلا وسهلا فيكم، ما في محل في الهول مفتوح، في نيو سنتر كمان مفتوح إذا بتريدوا. اللي بيحب يفوت على الكنيسة في يفوت. بحق آلامه المقدسة ارحمنا وارحم العالم أجمع بحق آلامه المقدسة ارحمنا وارحم العالم أجمع بحق آلامه المقدسة ارحمنا وارحم العالم أجمع قدوس الله قدوس القوي قدوس الذي لا يموت ارحمنا وارحم العالم اجمع Test one, two.
very blessed great Friday of our Lord's Passion to you all brothers and sisters. In a few moments time, His Excellency Bishop Tarabay with the clergy, we're going to make our way to the hall where we will begin our entrance procession. We'll be ringing the bell soon and once we start ringing the bells, it'll be the sign to be upstanding to begin our rite of adoration of the cross. Thank you. نقف كلنا اخوتي الاحبه
to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Heavenly King, you conceived the crown of your glory and the might of your kingdom and were raised up naked upon the cross. You redeemed your creation and answered the call of the faithful thief, granting him entrance with you in paradise. Grant, Lord, that we imprint you in the depth of our hearts, hang upon the cross for our sake. For if we print our lives with your suffering, we'll be deserving to share the glory of your resurrection. We praise you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Lord, have mercy on us and help us. O Christ, our Saviour, 
Show us the path to Golgotha, that we may walk in your steps as we bear our own crosses. May it be for us a path to salvation and a guide to holiness in which we will neither turn nor retreat until we arrive where you arrive. May we die with you so as to rise with you in eternal glory. O Lord our God, to you be glory now and forever. They trusted, and you delivered them. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Do not be far from me, for trouble is me. And there is no one to help. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. 
You lay me in the dust of death. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothing among themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. لنرفع عنا التسبيح والمجد والإكرام إلى الأمان السماوي الذي علك على الصليب فجمع الشعوب وضمهم ليدي إلى الرب المتأنس الذي أشرق على مغارب الأرض بصليب وقبل المجد والسجود من الأقدار كافة إلى الراعي الصالح الذي عني برعيته وبذل نفسه عن خرافه فخلص الشعوب بصليبه ومحى خطاياهم بذبحه الصالح الذي له المجد والإكرام في هذا الوقت وفي كل أيام حياتنا إلى Amen. We worship, thank, and praise your eternity, O God. For you created us in your image and formed us in your likeness. We praise your salvation, lover of mankind. For on this Friday you revived us by your cross and by your death delivered us from death. You will to create us on the sixth day, and by your holy hands you took dust of the earth and formed us. You breathed into us the breath of life, and we became a wondrous vessel of perfected beauty and knowledge. When we disobeyed and transgressed your commandment through our ignorance, we were delivered to judgment and death. And on the sixth day, a Friday full of mysteries, your mercy prevailed on our behalf. O tender and merciful one, and your hands were nailed on the cross for our salvation. And your face met the spittle of those who crucified you. Your side was pierced with a spear so as to revive us, obtaining from you life and renewal through the blood and water flowing from your side. And now on Friday, the day of your saving passion, your church cries to you to the mouths of her children and petitions you to the fragrance of this incense, saying, as in the beginning you created out of love, and in the end you redeemed us and gave life, likewise save your creation to your mercy. By your cross grant peace and avert anger. By your cross put an end to wars and dispel all hostilities. By your cross, put an end to vengeance and pacify all turmoil. By your cross, humble the proud, expose the self-serving and remove all animosity. By your cross, establish your church and strengthen all ministries and convents. By your cross, let bishops be honorable, purify your priests and exalt the deacons. By your cross, sustain the elderly, subdue the haste of youth, and form the young. By your cross, guide your flock who worships you and honors your passion, 
embracing your wounds and finding glory in your sacrifice. Redeem your people, O Lord, and fulfill your promise to us. Revive us through your victory over death and renew your creation. Clothe us with your glory, with your glory so that we may become beacons of your light, being made worthy to enter into your glorious resurrection and the eternal inheritance of your kingdom. Then without ceasing, we shall give glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. fragrant incense of forgiveness. You offered yourself on the wood of the cross as sacrifice and offering for the sake of sinners. Now, O Lord, cancel the debt of our guilt towards the Father. Repel every blow and painful suffering from us and delight us in your joyful hope and consoling assistance. Graciously forgive the faithful departed. Then without ceasing, we shall give glory to you, to your Father and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We listen now to the first reading from Isaiah.
First reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For who grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground? He had no form of majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. As one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made the intercession for the transgressors. قراءة ثانية من نبوءة دانيال وبينما كنت أتكلم وأصلي وأعترف بخطيئتي وخطيئة شعب إسرائيل وألقي تضرعي أمام الرب إلهي لأجل جبل قدس إلهي وبينما كنت أتكلم بالصلاة 
إذا بالرجل جبرائيل الذي رأيته في الرؤيا في البدء قد طار سريعا ووافاني في وقت تقدمة المساء وأتى وتكلم معي وقال يا دانيال إني خرجت الآن لأعلمك فتفهم عند بدء تضرعاتك خرجت كلمة وأتيت أنا لأخبرك بها لأنك رجل عزيز على الله فتبين الكلمة وافهم الرؤيا إن سبعين أسبوعا حددت على شعبك وعلى مدينة قدسك لإفناء المعصية وإزالة الخطيئة والتكفير عن الإثم والإتيان بالبر الأبدي وختم الرؤيا والنبوءة ومسح قدوس القدوسين فاعلم وافهم إنه من صدور الأمر بإعادة بناء أورشليم إلى رئيس مسيح سبعة أسابيع ثم في اثنين وستين أسبوعا تعود وتبنى السوق والسور ولكن في ضيق الأوقات وبعد الأسابيع الاثنين والستين يفصل مسيح ولا يكون له ويأتي رئيس فيدمر المدينة والقدس بالطوفان تكون نهايتها وإلى النهاية يكون ما قضي من القتال والتخريب في أسبوع واحد يقطع مع كثيرين عهدا ثابتا وفي نصف الأسبوع يبطل الذبيحة والتقدمة وفي جناح الهيكل تكون شناعة الخراب إلى أن ينصب الإفناء المقضي على المخرب A third reading from the prophecy of Micah. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who put nothing into their mouths. Therefore, it shall be night to you without vision and darkness to you without revelation. The sun shall go down upon the prophets and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe, its priests teach for a price, its prophets give oracles for money, yet they lean upon the Lord and say, surely the Lord is with us, no harm shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be pl plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, 
and the mountain of the house a wooded height. من رسالة بولس الرسول إلى أهل غلاطيا يا أخوتي فإن كنا ونحن نسعى أن نبرر في المسيح قد وجدنا نحن أيضا خطأ فهل يكون المسيح إذا خادما للخطيئة حاشا فإن عدت أبني ما قد هدمت جعلت نفسي متعديا لأني بشريعة المسيح مت عن الشريعة لكي أحيا لله لقد صلبت مع المسيح فلست بعد بعد أنا الحي بل المسيح هو الحي فيا وإن كنت الآن حيا في الجسد فإني حي به بإيمان بإيمان ابن الله الذي أحبني وبذل نفسه عني ولست أبطل نعمة الله لأنه إن كان التبرير بالشريعة فباطلا إذا مات المسيح أيها الغلطيون الأغبياء من سحركم أنتم الذين رسم أمام عيونكم يسوع المسيح مصلوبا أريد أن أعرف منكم هذا الأمر فقط أمن أعمال الشريعة نلتم الروح أم من سماع الإيمان أهكذا أنتم أغبياء أبعد ما بدأتم بالروح تكملون الآن بالجسد؟ هل احتملتم كل تلك الألام عبساً؟ هذا إن كان عبساً فالذي يمنحكم الروح ويعمل فيكم الأعمال القديرة أمن أعمال الشريعة يفعل ذلك أمن سماع الإيمان؟ هكذا إبراهيم آمن بالله فحسب له ذلك براً فاعلموا اذا ان الذين هم من الايمان هم ابناء ابراهيم وبما ان الكتاب سبق فراى ان الله سيبرر الامم بالايمان سبق فبشر ابراهيم قائلا فيك تتبارك جميع الامم اذا فالذين هم من الايمان يتباركون مع ابراهيم المؤمن فجميع الذين هم من اعمال الشريعه هم تحت اللعنة لأنه مكتوب ملعون كل من لا يثبت على العمل بكل ما هو مكتوب في الشريعة وواضح أنه ما من أحد يبرر بالشريعة أمام الله لأن البار بالإيمان يحيا وليست الشريعة من الإيمان بل إن من يعمل بأحكام الشريعة يحيا بها فالمسيح افتدانا من لعنة الشريعة إذ صار لعنة من أجلنا لأنه مكتوب ملعون كل من علق على خشبة أنت القربان عن خطايا البشر أنت الغفران والرجاء المنتظر أعطينا الإيمان الحية ربنا المسبوح الحية عن دنيانا نموت نحيا للملكون A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the Evangelist. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came. And the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? 
Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the fire light, stared at him and said, This man also was with them. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour still, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. فقال بطرس يا رجل لا أدري ما تقول وفجأة بينما هو يتكلم صاح الديك فالتفت الرب وحدق إلى بطرس وتذكر بطرس كلام الرب إذ قال له اليوم قبل أن يصيح الديك ستنكرني ثلاث مرات فخرج وبكى بكاء مرا وكان الرجال الذين يحرسون يسوع يسخرون منه ويضربونه ويعصبون وجهه ويسألونه قائلين تنبأ من الذي ضربك وكانوا يقولون عليه أشياء أخرى كثيرة مجدفين ولما طلع النهار إن عقد مجلس شيوخ الشعب أحبارا وكتبا واستدعوا يسوع إلى مجلسهم وقالوا له إن كنت أنت المسيح فقل لنا فقال لهم إن قلته لكم فلن تؤمنوا وإن سألتكم فلن تجيبوا ولكن منذ الآن يكون ابن الإنسان جالسا عن يمين قدرة الله فقالوا كلهم إذا هل أنت هو ابن الله؟ قال لهم يسوع أنتم تقولون إني أنا هو فقالوا لماذا بعد نحتاج إلى شهادة فها نحن قد سمعنا شهادة من فمه وقاموا جميعهم وساقوا يسوع إلى بلاطس وبدأوا يشكونه قائلين وجدنا هذا الرجل يضلل أمتنا وينهى عن أداء الضريبة إلى قيصر ويقول إنه المسيح الملك Then Pilate asked him Are you the king of the Jews? He answered You say so Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds I find no basis for an accusation against this man But they were insistent and said he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. 
Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. وكان على بيلاطس أن يطلق لهم في كل عيد سجينا فصرخوا بأجمعهم قائلين ارفع هذا الرجل وأطلق لنا برأبا وكان برأبا قد ألقي في السجن بسبب فتنة حدثت في المدينة وجريمة قتل وخاطبهم بيلاطس ثانية وكان يريد أن يطلق يسوع أما هم فكانوا يصيحون قائلين اصلبه اصلبه فقال لهم لثالث مرة وأي شر فعل هذا الرجل لم أجد فيه ذنبا يستوجب الموت إذا سأؤدبه ثم أطلقه أما هم فكانوا يلحون بأصوات عالية مطالبين بصلبه واشتد صياحهم فحكم بيلاطس بأن ينفذ طلبهم وأطلق من كان قد ألقي في السجن بسبب فتنة وجريمة قتل وهو الذي كانوا يطالبون به أما يسوع فأسلمه إلى مشيئتهم وفيما هم يسوقونه إلى الصلب أمسكوا سمعان رجلا قيروانيا آتيا من الحقل وجعلوا عليه الصليب ليحمله وراء يسوع وكان يتبعه جمع غفير من الشعب ونساء كن ينتحبن ويندبنه فالتفت يسوع إليهن وقال يا بنات أورشليم لا تبكين علي بل ابكين على أنفسكن وأولادكن فها هي أيام تأتي يقولون فيها طوبى للعواقر والبطون التي لم تلد والثلي التي لم ترضع حينئذ يبدأ الناس يقولون للجبال أسقطي علينا وللتلال غطينا لأنهم إن كانوا يفعلون هذا بالعود الأخضر فماذا يكون فعلهم بالعود اليابس؟ Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The soldiers cast lots to divide his clothing, while the people stood by watching, and the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was likewise crucified derided him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? We indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Amen, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's stop standing, please. يوحنا والرسول والتلميذ الطاهر وحمل يسوع صليبه وخرج إلى مكان يدعى جمجمة وبالعبرية جلجثة وهناك صلبوه وصلبوا معه اثنين آخرين من هنا ومن هنا ويسوع بينهما وكتب بلاطس عنوانا ووضعه على الصليب وكان مكتوبا فيه يسوع الناصري ملك اليهود فقرأ هذا العنوان كثير من اليهود لأن المكان الذي صلب فيه يسوع كان قريبا من المدينة ولأن الكتابة كانت بالعبرية واللاتينية واليونانية فقال الأحبار اليهود لبيلاطس لا تكتب ملك اليهود بل إنه هو قال إني ملك اليهود أجاب بيلاطس ما كتبته قد كتبته ولما صلب جنود يسوع أخذوا ثيابه وجعلوها أربع حصص لكل جندي حصة وأخذوا القميص وكان قطعة واحدة غير مخيطة بل منسوجة كلها من أعلى إلى أسفل فقال بعض لبعض لا نشقه بل لنقطر عليه لمن يكون فتمت آية الكتاب اقتصموا ثيابي بينهم وعلى لباس اقترعوا هذا ما فعله الجنود وكانت واقفة بالقرب من صليب يسوع أمه وأخت أمه ومريم زوجة كلوبا ومريم المجدلية فلما رأى يسوع أمه والتلميذ الذي كان يحبه واقفا إلى جانبها قال لأمه يا امرأة هذا هو ابنك ثم قال التلميذ ها هي أمك ومن تلك الساعة أخذها التلميذ إلى خاصته بعد ذلك كان يسوع يعلم أن كل شيء قد تم ولكي تتم آية الكتاب قال أنا عطشان وكان هناك إناء مملوء خلا فغمسوا في الخل إسفنجة ووضعوا في عود من ذوفة وأدنوها من فمه فلما ذاق يسوع الخل قال لقد تم ثم حنى رأسه وأسلم الروح From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John Carrying the cross by himself he went out to what is called the place of the skull which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldier had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. 
This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, but for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldier did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on the branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let's be seated. Dear clergy, brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a tremendous spiritual joy to welcome you all, parishioners of this beloved parish of Our Lady of Lebanon, and guests and visitors gathered here on this holy morning and like every year to adore the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, instrument of our salvation. Particularly, I would like to acknowledge the presence among us of some guests, including the Honorable Peter Dutton, leader of the opposition, and Mrs. Curly Dutton, the Honorable Minister Chris Bowen, Dr. Andrew Charlton, MP, Ms. Julia Finn, State MP, the Honorable Scott Morrison, former Prime Minister, and Mrs. Jenny Morrison and their two daughters, and Sister Marie Antoinette Saadi, Mother Superior of the Maronite Sisters of the Holy Family. Our Maronite liturgy for Great Friday focuses on the adoration of the cross. We do repeat in our liturgy three times in Aramaic, the language spoken by Jesus Christ. We say, which translates, Jesus Christ crucified for our sins, have mercy on us. On this day, we seek first and foremost the mercy of God and his forgiveness. We look up to the cross and we say, forgive me, Lord, for not loving you as much as you love me. We come together to adore the cross and to reflect on how this instrument of death and suffering has become an instrument of life and salvation. We affirm that the cross was a means to an end and not an end itself. Let us transport ourselves to Golgotha on that afternoon. There we witness the most innocent man, God himself, hanging on a cross, bearing the weight of humanity's sins. It is a scene of profound humility and sacrificial love. Despite the immense agony, not a single word of complaint or doubt escapes his lips. As we stand, Amidst the crowd gathered at the foot of the cross, we encounter a diverse range of individuals. Some have come to moon, their hearts heavy with sorrow and repentance. Others have come to sneer, their hearts hardened by disbelief and mockery. Still, 
there are those who are simply drawn by curiosity. The combined accounts of the four Gospels provide us with the seven words spoken to Jesus on the cross by those people present there. And my reflection today on these seven words spoken to our Lord in his final moments of earthly suffering is inspired by Archbishop Fulton Sheen in his book, Life of Christ. The first word spoken to Jesus on the cross, we read it in St. Matthew. The, pass, the passers-by blasphemed against him, tossing their heads. Come now, they said, you who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, rescue yourself. Come down from that cross if you are the Son of God. The passers-by were shameless. They did not even remain near the cross long enough to absorb and understand the mercy which flows from the crucified. They did not realize that our Lord was speaking about the temple of his body and not that of Jerusalem. The cruelty of the lips which sneer is, a sinful, is as sinful as the cruelty of the hands which nail. How often do we, like those passers-by, seek visible miracles and immediate solutions rather than placing our trust in the Lord's promises and timing? The second word spoken to our Lord come from the mouth of the good thief when he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. While passers-by were judging the divinity of our Lord by deliverance from pain, the good thief was asking for deliverance from sin. He did not ask for any proof, nor did he place any conditions. He believed that Jesus was God. And this was the only word spoken to the crucified that received an answer. And it was the promise of paradise to the thief that very day. Beloved, our God is patient and ever ready to bestow his love and forgiveness upon us. So let us not delay asking for it. The third word spoken to Jesus was from the thief of, to the left, who had doubts. Save yourself and us too, if you are the Messiah. This thief's plea reveals a narrow understanding of salvation, focused solely on physical deliverance from suffering. In a similar way, in our moments of weakness, we often petition God for earthly comforts while neglecting our spiritual well-being. In contrast, let us prioritize the salvation of our souls above temporal concerns, seeking God's mercy and grace even in the midst of trials and tribulations. The fourth word to the cross came from the chief priest scribes and Pharisees who were considered among the elite of the community. He saved others. He cannot save himself. If he is the king of Israel, he has but to come down from the cross here and now, and we will, leave, we will believe in him. In their arrogance, these religious leaders challenged the Lord to perform a miracle asserting that this descent from the cross would validate his claims of divinity. However, their demand for a sign revealed their lack of faith, for they had witnessed Jesus' miracles before, including the raising of Lazarus from the dead, yet remained determined in their unbelief and rejection of Jesus Christ. Despite the human instinct to escape suffering, Jesus remained steadfast on the cross, driven by his divine purpose. 
It was not his humanity, but his divinity that anchored him to the cross, fulfilling the will of the Father and offering redemption to humanity through his sacrificial love. The fifth word was said after our Lord screamed out, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthani. Upon hearing this, some people said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. Let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. In this moment, some mistakenly interpreted Jesus' cry to the Father as a call to Elijah. This misunderstanding reflects a common tendency among individuals to perceive religion through a lens that aligns with their own desires and preferences. It is in the same way when we see today restriction on religious freedom. We are not anymore free to speak freely, to teach and to preach our values and traditions. Just as some onlookers at Golgotha misinterpreted Jesus' plea, many in today's world seek to reshape Christianity to suit their lifestyle and needs. They twist the teaching of Christ to fit their own agenda, unwilling to align their lives with his teaching. The sixth word directed toward the cross emanated from the soldier who in their mockery offered Jesus vinegar and taunted, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. These soldiers, representing the might of the Roman Empire, were accustomed to a culture where generals would sacrifice countless lives for fleeting earthly glory. They failed to grasp the profound truth of Jesus' sacrifice. Had Jesus obeyed their command and saved himself, humanity would have been left without hope. It is through his selfless act of love, even in the face of mockery, that salvation is made possible for all who believe. And finally, the last words addressed to the cross came from the centurion, the commander of the soldiers, who gave testimony to the earth-shaking event he had just witnessed by saying, this was the Son of God. In this profound moment, the centurion who had overseen the execution of Jesus acknowledged the divine nature of the crucified one. Despite the abandonment of Jesus by his disciples and the absence of any defense from his followers, the centurion, a representative of earthly authority, bowed in, rever in reverence to the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, in this moment, the significance of the cross begins to unfold. A Jewish man, I mean the one who was crucified at the right hand of Jesus, had already sought and received salvation. And now a soldier of Caesar humbly acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God. As we stand before the cross today, let us not merely commemorate an event of the past, but to reaffirm our commitment to believe and to surrender to God's will. Like the centurion, may we bow in adoration, acknowledging Christ as the Son of God, whose self-sacrifice opened the way for our redemption and for new life. Let us pray. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you because by your cross you have redeemed the world. I wish you all many blessings on this Good Friday, and I look forward to seeing you again in the thousands on Easter Sunday and every Sunday. Amen.
just a few announcements and a few instructions. Just a reminder that the collection is going to happen now, and all the money collected on Good Friday in the Catholic Church all over the world, it's collected to help all the churches, persecuted the churches, especially in the Holy Land. And it's called the Peter Pence. Is an signia li lahtin lam hala hi filas mar butros li lahtin lam bi bi kill the kanis the Catholic in the world, and he la musaada kill the kanis the mutahada, khasatan bil aradi al muaddasi. Just a small reminder about our program and our celebrations. This afternoon, we still have at two thirty the Litany of the Passion, three p.m. We have another service of the Liturgy of the Adoration of the Cross. 6 p.m. We have the Divine Mercy Novena starts today, followed by confessions. We have confessions, all the priests available tonight here in the cathedral from 7 till 11 p.m. Tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., we have the Saturday of the Light with the ritual of the reconciliation, the rite of forgiveness, and also we have confession during this rite. 6 p.m. tomorrow night, we have the Vigil Mass for the Resurrection, followed by the Divine Mercy Novena. And 11 p.m., we have the Solemn Mass of the Resurrection, celebrated by His Excellency Bishop Antoine Charbel Tarabai, with the opening of the tomb and the rite of peace. And Sunday is we have the normal, uh, the normal time Masses for in our parish. Just one more reminder, the school appeal boxes that you took with you during the Lent, at the beginning of the Lent, too, please kindly, you can return them to our parish or to any Maronite parish. We remember you today at 2.30 a.m. We have the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Lord. We also have 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 the Lord of the Lord. سبت النور ردبة الغفران كمان فيها اعترافات الساعة ستة عنا الداس ليلة عيد الأيامي والساعة 11 عنا الداس الاحتفالي اللي بيحتفل فيه سيدنا مع فتح الأبر وردبة السلام كما وأنه منذكركم إذا بتريدوا العلب يلي خدناهن لمساعدة حتى نساعد تلاميذ المدارس بلبنان صار فينا نبلش نردهن على عيانا المروني Just some instructions What's going to happen now? Next in our Adoration of the Cross Liturgy. Next in our Liturgy of the Adoration of the Cross, it's time for the cross to take it down and for the procession, which we will be led and the adoration by His Excellency Bishop Tarabai. The priests are going to be carrying the coffin with the cross and flowers. Please, during the uh, procession, Stay in your seats because the procession is going to be among you. It's going to go down outside of the church, down in the hall, and in the parish center. Then the procession will conclude in the church, back to the church, with the adoration of the Holy Cross, where we all kneel down three times on both knees, when, when we say in Aramaic, as Sayyidina say in homily, she had a slip to Once we finish the adoration of the cross, the coffin and the cross will be taken to the tomb behind the altar. Then the clergy, please, if we could ask you to wait for the clergy to go outside in the parking so you can all take a blessing with the cross on your foreheads. It's very important today not to go home before you take the blessing with the cross. أختي الأحبة بسرعة بس هلا رح ينزل الصليب وبعد منا بيصير زياح الصليب يلي رح يصير بالكنيسة رح نطلع لبرا نزل على الهول ونروح على المركز الرعية سيدنا هو رح يقود الزياح الكهنة هن رح يحملوا الصليب الكفن مع مع الزهور نطلب منكم إذا بتريدوا نضل محلاتنا برا وجوا حتى يمرق الزياح بيناتنا ونتبارك بعدين الزياح بينتهي بقلب الكنيسة هون مع رتبة سجدة الصليب بدنا نركع ثلاث مرات عركبنا اثنين وقتها منقول 
تمشي حادث لابت حلفين اترحم علي بس نخلص سجدة الصليب يوضع الكفن مع الصليب بالقبر بعد منا الكهاني بنطلع لبرا حتى يكونوا جاهزين يباركوكم بالصليب سو رح يكون في بركة بالصليب على جبهتنا رح يكون في كتير كهاني إذا بتريدوا ما حريروا على البيت قبل ما يأخذ بركة الصليب Let's be upstanding, no? Yeah. 
Oh, oh, oh. 
destroyer of error and the giver of salvation to the world. You are the sign of victory in the battle and put an end to the old sacrifices and fulfill the sacraments. Through you, peace came to us and joy dwells in us. Through you, the church is elevated and our children are protected. Our bodies are made holy. Our sins are wiped away and our righteousness is increased. 
Through you, believers reach perfection, and the living are armed. Through you, Holy Cross, the departed find rest. We take refuge on the last day, and with you we walk towards the house of life. We give glory to Christ, the Word, who was crucified on you, and to his Father and his living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Next to the shelter, all the priests, now the clergy are outside, ready to give you blessing with the cross.